So there's a new podcast because you're a podcast, not mm -hmm. just a podcast expert. You own your own podcast. Mm -hmm. You've been doing it long enough to understand the industry, to understand the finances, to understand, you know, the power. This is how you make your money mm -hmm. and you do it with integrity. Right. The black guy who tips dot com. The black guy who tips dot com. Roderick Morrow is here. So there's a new podcast called Native Land Pod. Mm -hmm. And it is hosted by Angela Rye, Tiffany Cross and Andrew Gillum. Mm -hmm. And it's been making the rounds because, you know, you're on a publicity tour to get people to know because there's 50, 11 million podcasts out there, which this is not, by the way, this is a radio show. It's completely mm -hmm. different energy and all of that, right? It's a live radio show. Podcasts are different, a little yep. different. That said, um, it's getting a lot of heat because this podcast comes out of a, a network on iHeart that was founded. It's a network that was founded uh, a, for this political season. Mm -hmm. So they, they, they're coming out because we are in an election cycle. Mm -hmm. And it was a conglomerate that has come together under the iHeart banner that is owned by this particular podcast. It's called Reasoned Choice Media. So they created a political uh, network called Reasoned Choice Media that Native Land Pod is the first offering. Mm. And it's Charlemagne the God. Angela Rye and Chris Morrow, who's the CEO of Loudspeakers Podcast Network, they've come together to build this this thing, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, they've been out there saying some stuff. Uh, and I'm not saying that they're wrong, right? Andrew Gillum, former candidate for the uh, governorship of Florida, he's not he's not a lightweight. Um, Tiffany Cross, of course, former MSNBC host, and Angela Rye, who I believe is an attorney, and she's you know she's not she's a capable human being. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm I'm. Concerned, though, uh, about uh, in order to be seen, to, to make money, in order to be successful, mm -hmm. you have to, to have the clicks. You have to have people listening. And unfortunately, the way in which this, this cycle goes, you, you, you um, sometimes have to be outrageous and maybe even do things that may not be beneficial for the rest of us. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to be controversial. Let me say it like that. Mm -hmm. Can we can we withstand this, Roderick Morrow? Is this is this is this the time and the place? So um, so the thing I noticed first about them was their press rollout, right? Because they did interviews in a few places. Uh, Joy Reid had them on. Uh, had well, Angela had Angela and uh, Charlemagne on. Um, <laughs> uh, then also they went on the Breakfast Club. The three of them, Angela, Andrew, and um, Tiffany Cross. Um, and so those interviews kind of were, uh, at least to me, uh, I, I thought they were a bad look just for what was being pitched on there. It was a lot of like, um, it was a lot of like Charlemagne's kind of like this, wh what are we even voting for? Kind of, you know, his disposition is very much like a, Hey, you know, if people don't want to, black people don't want to vote. I mean, that's just what it is, you know, as opposed to like a, I have a platform, here's some information, let me inform my audience. And it's been long enough that I feel like it's purposeful because he's been in political spaces where I know he was educated. He's had guests on that educated him. But then the next time he has a person on, he goes back to like, I don't know anything. Who I just know Joe I, Joe Biden doing a bad job, right? You know that kind of thing, um, and so it felt a little icky to see Angela and Tiffany and Andrew, who I know know better, who actually do know the facts, who do know specifics like deliverables and specific criticisms as well, right? They they know the they know the it, it, the minutia. And to see them kind of play dumb, like, hey, you know, it's, hey, it's, it's, they both kind of the same to me. That was the bad look. But I did go listen to their podcast because I didn't want to just be like a hater, you know, <laughs> just because they I didn't like the rollout don't mean the podcast wouldn't be better. And the episode I listened to today I thought was better. It's more informed. It's more balanced. Um, they actually do spend some time talking about republicans and the lack of deliverables over there which i think is a huge part of the conversation that gets skipped over in black spaces which makes it look like we're just saying don't go vote or have apathy or whatever so i thought the podcast is is better and most importantly the pushback on social media is what gives me hope 
because I feel like in 2016, there wasn't a lot of pushback on stuff like this. So somebody came with some general, some general talking points that were very like, hey, man, might as well stay home. People, people kind of let it slide in 2016. And now to see like the amount of pushback they got, they were trending. They were responding on social media, trying to clear up their points. And I that does give me hope because I think if we're being fair and we really want to represent black people, someone needs to make the, the advocate for the idea of like, let's put people in office that do the things that we want them to do, that push our goals further towards what progress we we can't like nihilism and apathy if we give into that we have seen the result of that from at least 4 years of trump and i'm and if if we want to be frank i say all the way back to 2010 we've seen the results of hey man somebody else will take care of it no we can't let that happen so right. i actually appreciated the podcast more than the rollout and the pushback more than the their interviews 8668018255 who is listening um uh, but my larger question is did we need this right now? That's that's my larger question. And I, I say this in all sincerity because I, I, I feel like there's a lot of noise. Mm -hmm. And what we need is clarity, not chaos. We need clarity, not chaos. And I don't, I'm not confident that if your, your personal finances are tied to the success of something, and I say this as someone, you know, my dad always taught me to keep a job because, you know, you got to, you know, do pursue all of the things you want to pursue, but make sure you have a job with benefits because you want to be able to have the freedom and the flexibility to be able to do the things with integrity, right? Because then you're not beholden to that thing. You never have to do strange things for money, right? Even at the Daily News, I had several other things going on in the 16 years that I was there. I was always doing something else. And it also allowed me to balance my own, you know, find my way in terms of what I believed, what I stood for, because I could have been a career daily newser that could have been bought, you know, I could have bought mm -hmm. into an ideology that would have pigeonholed me a certain kind of way, but it allowed me the flexibility to, to bump up against the system. Right. Every now and, and not be afraid because I got other options. Right. Right. So I'm writing, writing books and then I'm doing, I'm starting businesses and I'm doing all of these things while I'm under this corporate banner. Mm -hmm. And I feel like if your whole, you know, your economy is tied to the success of your thing and the success of your thing is tied to controversy, mm -hmm. how do we, the consumer, really, you know, and, and we're, yeah. listen, and, and I'm talking about all of the people, all of y'all's right. favorites, right? And I'm, I'm speaking as somebody that has been in these rooms and I know how mm -hmm. this thing works and I'm tired of watching mm -hmm. People do these things because it's commerce. And I don't agree with you that Charlemagne knows better. I don't think he knows better because I don't mm. think that he has a lot of depth um, of, of knowledge as a person because it's, it's easy to forget. You know, there's a mm. scripture about the man that looks at himself in the mirror and walks away and forgets what he looks like. It's easy to do that when, when your substance isn't. In, I in, think in, the reason I say I think he knows better is because I've seen him do events with Stacey Abrams. I've seen him do events with Kamala Harris and then get on the radio and act like he's never heard anything they have to say, any position on a on an issue. Say he doesn't know where they're at. Well, you were you were with them where they were at. So how so can you were, act like were they the questions were the questions prepared? Like, did he come up with the questions? Do you, do you know right. what I'm saying? Like you you're you're saying something. Somebody yeah. again that prepares for interviews with people you know right. like i wrote my own script when i was on television i didn't have someone write a script for me mm -hmm. if if you are preparing for something because you are curious and you want to know then you would know no knowing mm -hmm. something is I guess, knowing something i guess what i'm saying is uh to me it seems to behoove him to uh, to, to to appear to be ignorant like okay there's something invested but who does it benefit who does it benefit, so, Brian? I, I don't know what his, I would have, I don't know his personal motivations, but there's something, it's it's too much, it's happened too often. That okay. at this point, it must be on purpose to signal to somebody like, hey man, these Democrats don't tell me what to do. All I know is you were the person hosting the event. So either I have to completely feel like you're like an idiot if you literally can't remember what happened at your own event. Or I feel like you get on the air and you're purposely pulling this like, hey, man, mm. I'm, I don't know what's happening. But either way, the alliances that people have to have in this industry 
Because if this is his imprint and y'all's podcast is under that, you're not going to go on the air and correct that man and say, hey, man, what you're doing right now is messed up. You're going to have to key key with them and pretend like, it's, hey, it's a good point you're making. Now, on their podcast, it w- that podcast don't sound like that. That podcast was sure. very informed, very reasoned, nuanced criticisms. Okay. But on the air with, with him, it didn't. It sounded back to that generalized stuff. And I think that's a part of it. And then the money. You can never skip over the money because, like, these campaigns are about to spend billions of dollars this That's right. year. That's um, right. And so there's advertising that happens on these podcasts. I'm as an independent podcaster, we've been offered money from from advertisers that are like, hey, we want to promote this specific thing for this specific candidate. Can we you know, are y'all amenable to that? And we've never done it for anybody we wouldn't have done it for, you know, Um but like the Biden campaign came to us and was like, hey, could y'all, what do y'all think about this? So like that kind of deal is happening all the time. And I wonder how many people are positioning themselves to be the soothsayer, the pie, pie piper to black people. And like I can reach these ignorant black people that normally don't right. vote, the bus driver, the, you know, the, the working right. class black that doesn't, which I, I, I have a problem with the way that's framed. But just that is the that is the message they send out is. They're not right. Of course, they're reaching me and the other smart blacks. But what about the rest of the blacks that need to be told how to vote? You need me and give me the money and I'll do the outreach for you. And so, you know, that could be part of it, too, which is why a podcast would make an entrance into the political foray in 2024 at the crux of oh, crucial boy. time, you know? Oh, my gosh. Um, 866-801-8255. Or maybe Charlemagne's a genius because he recognizes the people that listen to The Breakfast Club probably are not the average informed voter anyway so he can mm. go to the stacy abrams but uh, you know i got i have a problem with the stacy abrams of the world the kamala harris's of the world and even the joy reeds of the world who are really smart people entertaining that knowing knowing what that is you you're saying that this is the only to your point this is the only way to reach people and i don't like it's, I, it's like so, I, I, it's so to me, it's yeah. it's it's like I broached this topic on on social media maybe a week ago, right? When these interviews made the circuit, and you know, and I genuinely was asking, like, what what does it say, and what does it mean that when we want outreach to black people, we are sending people to uninformed, to like comedy entertainment people? We're not sending like. And, and there's not something that seems to happen for other races of people. Like we don't send Biden to talk to Joe Rogan. We're like, why would he do that? You know what I mean? We won't send, we only send him to talk to Howard Stern who would be a better interviewer than that. And yes, he would. Even yeah. that is considered like kind of beneath, you know, like, nah, we know the president doesn't need to go on there, but we will send them to a place where they sniff the chairs of female guests that leave after they leave. We'll send them to a place where they ask the biggest things that have come out of those interviews are, do you really keep hot sauce in your purse? And did you smoke weed and listen to Tupac in college? Those are not serious places. And one thing I, w- I will say is one one response that 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 I do kind of think about was there's not enough black people in the media landscape who have been given or earned whatever the serious platform with the big like and gotten that pull behind them. So that they can have a space where they can say, come talk to me. I'm I do my research. I'm gonna get I, I have my criticism, blah, blah, blah. So they were saying we don't have enough of these spaces, and that's the problem. But to me, it's a cyclical thing, right? Chicken or the egg. Cause if Biden goes on uh the Karen Hunter show, then it becomes the place. You see what I'm saying? Like if that. you go on the Breakfast Club, it stays right. that place. Right. But how about um we got an audience here in Urban View. It doesn't have to be the Karen Hunter show. You can go to Clay yeah. Kane. You can go to Laree, Daniel Favors, like Reese on a Saturday. Like, you don't have to come to this show. I, I've never made that because I'm going to ask you questions. Yeah. And they won't be pre, you won't, you won't be able to screen the questions. So that's the other right. thing. There's nobody that can come on this show and tell me what I can and cannot ask them. But, I, don't, but you they, know what, though, can't Karen, come on. there's no way they screen that hot sauce question. It's no way I'm, they screen yes. that. Did you smoke weed with and listen to Tupac in college? Because it's such they a don't feel like they question. have to screen the questions because they're not going to get asked anything that will actually make them, you know, w- mm. which to me tells you everything that you just said. Right. right. You're not going to be asked anything that will challenge your platform or agenda. 
you know yeah, well it, what bothers me is that those things will still go viral and be considered negatives out of like right i know like, You're yeah right. so i don't so like it's still you took a hit not even in a policy area something that you because like here's the other thing about politicians that is important it's important for them to be challenged because that's how you gain the voters. You don't gain the voters with us just going, I agree with everything you said. Appreciate you coming on, player. No, it, it happens when someone is like, well, what about reparations? Whatever your answer is to that, that determines those people on the fringe, right? So asking somebody, choosing that time to, take, to be, do you have hot sauce? It's such a ridiculous thing, you know? So there are places these people can go, but like I said, it just doesn't feel like uh, there's a there's black places that get the same level of uh, of love. The people that are doing serious work, informed work, who have experts on those people don't get the same love. And so somehow we've moved into the gatekeepers of blackness are these people in this space that, you know, kind of seem to harbor some, uh, as you said, they're, they're more trying to get attention than they are trying to get like, you know, some hard hitting evidence and journalism. Well, they have to be journalists. So, number one, uh, how about that? Eight six six eight zero one eight two five five. I mean, journalism sh sh is a thing, right? The, yep. These are not journalists. Cardi B is not a journalist. These are not journalists. You you should yeah. want to have people who have some chops in this area to to do this work. And I and I, you know, I'm 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 taking this very seriously. I don't normally care. I'm never going to campaign for people to come on this show right. because, quite frankly, you know, you come, you don't come. This is never going to be a situation where I'm begging. It's in your best, you know, interest, you right. know. Um, and if you do come, come ready, Mark Morial and others, mm -hmm. come ready to have a conversation because I'm all about the conversation because I'm about the liberation of right. all people. This is it's not even just black people. I want everyone to be free, and it starts with the truth. And let's gather up and figure out what we need to do to get there, and let's let's plan and work together period right. so you know i i just it is insulting though it is insulting and this is. is this is a, a very important election very important election we don't got time for the fun and games and i'm, I'm glad yeah. everyone make it it's good money's great right make your money but at what cost my at question cost? my question for the democratic party and the consultants is who's the person that decides where they go to talk you know what i mean and why has it Cause I, you know, I've understood that like back with, with Obama, he did like Russ Parr and stuff. And so maybe at that point, someone thought something changed and they were like, Ooh, urban radio, we just go to that. But all urban radio, not the same. Like no. where's your yeah. research? You know what I mean? Like, like certain people are there for a completely different purpose when it comes to the community, man. Certain people want to talk about us as a community and what helps us and uplifts us. And some people want a viral moment that can go trend on Twitter. And I think that those two things are, are separate. 866-801-8255. What do y'all think? I mean, you know, and I'm talking mostly to the choir, but a lot of y'all also watch the breakfast club. You know, right. a lot of you listen and, you know, donkey of the day and all that. I mean, it was, it's cute for a moment, but yeah. like, to me, the, the stakes are too high. You know, we don't have the opportunity. To, I, I, I feel to, right. to play, to play around at this time. You know, it's an entertainment, um, it's an entertainment space. I respect that they do entertainment. There's, you know, I get when, uh, you know, like soldier boy goes on there or something, it goes viral. I, like I'm not trying to begrudge them that that's that yes. part of the culture for sure, but there's different parts of the culture. It's just right. it feels weird that we only have one space, even in such a dire political time that we're not. I honestly, when I watch Joy Reid and and Jason Johnson say, "Uh, why hasn't Biden talked to Charlemagne or went to Shannon Sharp's podcast?" I was like, "Why aren't y'all advocating for him?" To, right. I'm like, why aren't you advocating? Wait, did they say Shannon on? Sharp? Yes, they Club Shay Shay. Absolutely. Oh my God. Right. Oh my God. Well, oh my Shannon God. just going to be up there oh. drinking oh shots. Oh my God. Oh my God. I'm going to oh need a little God. bit more of this, Joe. I'm going <laughs> to need some. Hold on, Joe. Now, what you say? Hold on. How much student loans? Like, we can't have that, man. We need. God. We have spaces that. And I was, I was like, why aren't you advocating for your own space? Because I think him going on Joy Reid is more productive than going yes. on Shannon Sharp. So yes, like, why didn't why don't why aren't we trying to get that? And I think the people will come where you go to a certain extent. You can't always turn it into just like well that's well people were there. Like I said, millions if not billions of people, whatever millions of people listen to Joe Rogan. But we both know President Biden would be dumb as hell to go on that show. We both know that. So. 
if I'm not hating on a black man to say I mean, Trump doesn't even go on there. Exactly. So I'm not hating on a black man to say right. you created a space that is not the space for this. And I don't want to see the president go on there or Kamala Harris go on there. So you can ask her about smoking weed and Tupac when she has bills about black maternal health oh, that she's trying to push through. We're talking oh, about weed and Tupac so we can ask, is she lying or not? That's insane to me.